Greetings to you in the name that is above all other names. And that name is our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, last Sunday we talked about uh, can you handle the meat? And because uh, we've been on milk for so long and some people are on milk. Um, but uh, it was about can you handle the meat? And we found out that that meat is our Lord Jesus Christ. We take Him on. We take Him inside of us. And we learn more and more of God by taking on the Lord Jesus Christ. I like to say we are so thankful for the team members and uh, uh, the song above uh, um, that uh, our minister of music, Daryl, uh, known as Decider 65, he... Uh, uh, 63, I'm sorry, 63. Uh, you're headed to five now. <laughs> okay, but he, 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 uh, he directs the choir and how it should go and how we should sing it. It's all left up to him for he is the choir and the minister of music. And we're proud to have him here on Full of Grace Ministry. And he picked out the song, Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Now that takes me back to the last Sunday service, Take on the Meat. Uh, because Emmanuel, God with us, was that baby in a manger uh, that was our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that was Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, and so we're glad, uh, Brother Darrell, you picked that song out because I love the meat uh, and find out that Emmanuel, it was God with us in that little baby named Jesus. Uh, and Sister Nan, she sings, and uh, I guess a lot of you know that she's from uh, French. And uh, and so I love the way uh, she pronounces her word and uh, the word that I like to hear her say, Jesus. Uh, you know, it's something about throughout all the land uh, and different uh, nationalities, uh, people says that name and that name means a lot to us here on Full of Grace Ministry because we are gathered together in that name. Uh, our minister of music, Daryl, 63, and uh, Sister Nan, uh, which is striking Topaz, and uh, Chaplain uh, uh, Judy Lynn, uh, uh, we are here uh, for you uh, here on Sing Snout Place uh, where we can gather together, share our gospel songs and, and help one another and lift one another up and go into the Word of God and, and take on Jesus Christ and learn more about our Lord that came to this earth, Emmanuel. And I'm thankful that we have each other to lean on and, and, um, we get up in the morning times and, and we, uh, enter the, uh, the Full of Grace ministry is open 24 hours a day. So every day you can, uh, come on in to Full of Grace ministry, sit back, listen to music, share your music, uh, what you have to sing. It's for you, uh, uh, a place to worship our God, our Emmanuel. This place is for you. Uh, that's why we are here because we love the Lord God. We love the uh, Emmanuel that showed his face in the baby Jesus that day and they seen God's face. Uh, but some Sometimes, you know, we are learning. We are learning as we go on. I've been in this for a long time now. I was brought up on the church pews when my dad would minister and, and go to different churches. I've been through all denominations. Uh, well, a lot of them. Maybe not exactly all of them. Uh, a few I might have not got into yet. But I've been through the Catholics, the Methodists, the Baptists, and uh, um, I've had friends of Presbyterians. And you learn as you travel down here below. Because uh, sometimes we're just a baby, and we're learning, and, and we're in a process, and we learn more and more. But when you dig into this Word of God, when you learn and see um, the great things that God has wrote in this Bible, and we find out that Jesus spoke to us many times in parables. In parables. But I like to say, you know, sometimes as we learn, we can say this. Lord, I'm just a baby. Teach me how to talk. Lord, I'm just a baby. Teach me how to walk. My first word will be Daddy. 
my first step to your arms. Lord, I'm just a baby. Let me have a baby charm. I'm still a baby, Lord Jesus, even though the world say I am a man. You know I want to grow. And with your help, I know I can. Lord, I'm just a baby, tiny and afraid. I cry when I get hungry and when I disobey. Please feed me till I'm older. And then feed me when I'm old. Lord, I'm just a baby with a brand new thirsty soul. I'm still a baby, Lord Jesus. Even though the world says I'm a man, you know I want to grow. And with your help, I know I can. Lord, I'm just a baby with a brand new thirsty soul. I hope we're thirsty this morning. And uh, we're going to go into some reading here about parables. Uh, you learn a, a lot from our Lord Jesus Christ if you really listen and read them words, what He talks about when He speaks of the Heavenly Father. And He spoke so many times in parables. And I want to tell you the reason why that was. Because the world could not take it. Uh, um, they could not take it uh, if He came straight down here from heaven and just said, I am God. And, uh, and, and He just showed the miracles one after another. Uh, they could not take it like that. But He spoke in parables about His Heavenly Father. And He taught us more and more about His Heavenly Father. And I'm so glad He did. And if you listen closely to the words and the parables of Jesus Christ, you can find out and learn more, much, much, much more about God than you ever thought. And as a baby growing up, you, you'll get strong and He feeds you. He feeds you more. He shows you more of the Heavenly Father. And the Heavenly Father will also show you who He is. Our Heavenly Father will show you who He is. Emmanuel. You know, praise God. Uh, whenever I first started out in this, I used to just take things just the way that it was written, right on the top of the page. But the more you get into the Word and it's spiritually discerned, it jumps out at you. It comes alive. And and uh, I used to take, you know, like when it said Father, I'd say, well, there's a Father. When it said Son, I'd say, there's a Son. When it said Holy Ghost, there's a Holy Ghost. And I just kind of in my head would just kind of separate it all. But when I got to digging a little deeper, I realized that they all were in the body of Jesus Christ. And Jesus had to speak to uh, a lot of the people and the Jews uh, in parables because uh, they couldn't handle it, what was uh, inside of him, the God that was inside of him. So I'm going to get into this, and then I'm going to turn John loose. So the parable of the Father in the Son. A parable is a simple story used to illustrate moral or spiritual lessons as told by Jesus in the Gospels. For instance, uh, the parable of the sower, the parable of the talents, the parable of the lost sheep, and the parable of the good Samaritan. But if you stop and think about it, these words all have parables and stories in them. And you go into the deep meaning. So listen to this. A male child born of a woman we've said many times is a son. Okay, the story is about a male child born of a woman is a son. Okay? And uh, it says in Isaiah 9, 6, For to, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. The Son is the God? Oh my goodness, they're telling it right there in the Old Testament in Isaiah. Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So in that male child born of a woman, which is called a son, is the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. All in the one body of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew 1. 21 through 25. And she shall bring forth a son. A son brought forth of a woman is a, is a 
a, a, a male child brought forth of a woman is a son. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. There's our name. He shall save his people from their sins. Now this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet that I just read, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. So there's our son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Thank you, Daryl. You must have had a discernment of the Spirit. Amen? Okay, now I'm going to go into John chapter 10, verse 27 through 33. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus speaking, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life that they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands, the son's hands. No man can pluck them out of the son's hands. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. I and my Father are one. Same hands. We read the Son and the Father was all born in Emmanuel, God with us. Amen? Okay, in John chapter 14, 7 through 11. Okay. If you had known me, Jesus speaking, you should have known my Father also. The Father's in him, right? And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. And Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, that it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long, that yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How saith then, show us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you are not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He's in him. In him. He's in him. Emmanuel. You don't divide him up. He's in him. He, he the Father <clears throat> that's in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Listen, all different types of denominations are trying to get to God. The only way through God, to God is through Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ. And you don't split him up. You realize that Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. Once you get that picture in your mind and realize in the body of Jesus is the Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And that name of Jesus comes alive more and more and more. And you realize that any kind of trouble that you're in or anything that you go through, if you say that name, that will carry you through whatever you're going through. Praise God. I'm going to turn John loose. But realize that the Father is in Jesus. Amen. And that's the parable. See, the stories that I told you, Jesus was telling them, don't you know who I am? I've been with you this long. So he had to tell them, the Father is in me. He dwelleth in me. Amen? Okay, that very last uh, verse there, chapter 11, no, verse, 11. verse 11 that you just read. Here's what he said, and catch this. Believe me that I am in the Father. He's in the Father. And the Father in me. Then he's right here, here. Here's what he says. Catch this. Or else believe me. Uh-oh. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. This is Jesus talking. For the very work's sake. Uh, he wants you to believe that the Father's in Him and He's in the Father. Uh, and then He says, Believe Me. Believe Me for the very work's sake. Uh, so for your very work's sake, uh, we must believe uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, oh Lord Jesus. Uh, here's what I like to say. God in the Old Testament 
Testament says He alone is God. Okay, you can read that for yourself in the Old Testament. God in the Old Testament says He alone, alone is God and Savior. He's God and Savior. Now here's what He says. And you can find this in Isaiah 43, 10 through 11. Before me, this is God Almighty talking now. Before me, there was no God. Before me, there was no God. That should settle it right there. Just one single God that was formed. And there will be none after me. That is plain words. Even a baby, even a baby should understand that. Lord, I'm just a baby. Teach me how to talk. Lord, I'm just a baby. Teach me how to walk. Before me, there was no God formed. And there will be none after me. I, even I, am the Lord and there is no Savior beside me. Now this is God Almighty talking. This is God Almighty talking to us right here. He done told us very plainly there He is the only Savior beside me. Uh, there is no Savior beside me. And then he goes on and says, And yet, here's what we find out in the New Testament. Now we done found out God is the only God, the only Savior. And there's none else. There was no other God formed. And there won't be after Him. And He's the only Savior. we got one Savior. One individual Savior. And that's our God Almighty, known as our Heavenly Father. But yet, in the New Testament, we read that we are to be... Here's what it says, and you can find this in Titus 2 and 13. Looking for the blessed hope, uh, our and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Here's where it says who the God and Savior is. Jesus Christ, uh, who gave Himself for us uh, that He might redeem us uh, from every lawless deed uh, and purify for Himself uh, His own special people, zealous for good work. Uh, now listen, listen closely what He said here. For Himself, uh, we're talking about this true God and Savior. For Himself, His own special people. Now He calls you His special people. And we're looking uh, for that glorious appearing of our great God, our great Savior, and His name, His name, His name, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us uh, that He might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify Himself, His own special people, and zealous for good works. You just want to do right. You want to live right. When you find out this true one living God and His name is Jesus, then you want to go on a little further and do what He says in the Word because this man named Jesus is much more than a son. He's much more than just a, a man coming to earth that was born in a manger you know, by a virgin. He was the great God and the great Savior that came to this earth, just like Brother Darrell picked that song out, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us. Get to know Him, church. Get to know Him. Time is running out on all of us. We must know this great and mighty, powerful Savior and then call Him by His name, Jesus Christ. Now, so many people will uh, tell you, and you'll go to many churches, like I said, I've been there. I've been there. And they just call Him Son. Son, Son, Son. And it's like speaking in parables. And you've got to know and figure out who is the Son. Well, we know He's the Son of God, and that is true. Uh, but in parables, Jesus goes 
much deeper, much deeper, because people could not handle it. Uh, but people could not handle this. Uh, but when Jesus Christ came to this earth, uh, which is our great God, our great God, our great God and Savior. And let me tell you now, when we call Jesus great God and Savior, that the Word of God proclaims He is, remember in the Old Testament, before me there was no God form. Before me there was no God form. And there will be none after me. So let me tell you something, church. He's not another God. He's not a God sent by God. He's not uh, um, God the Father, some people call, and then God the Son, and then God the Holy Ghost. Uh, that is uh, the wrong way to say it, uh, because the Son is the Son of God. Uh, and when you say God the Son and God the Father, you're like you're putting two and three gods together. And they call that um, two to three gods, a triune, a trinity, or a triune. This is misinterpreting the Bible and, and making your own words say something the Bible don't say. We, we have just read to you straight out of the Word of God in Isaiah 43, 10 through 11. Before me there was no God form, and there will be none after me. So there wasn't like another God the Son with God the Father, and then a God the Holy Ghost came. It was all the one same true living God, and His name is Jesus. And we have found that out in the Word that we have just read. We have found that out. In Philippians 2, 9 through 11. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What Lord? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The Old Testament says this right here. It confirms Jesus is God. In Isaiah 45, 22 through through 23. Are you ready? I am God. There is no other. No other. So I don't know if anybody telling you, here's a God and here's a God, here's a God. The true God says, there is no other. There is no other. To me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. This was the Heavenly Father in the Old Testament plainly telling us uh, there is no other God. But lo and behold, in uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, at the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To say Jesus Christ is Lord is to say He is God. He is God. He's not God by God. He's not uh, a God sitting next to a God. When Jesus spoke in parables in the Bible and He sits on the right hand of the Father, you read in that book, like Trish just read, uh, the Father's hands and my hands. And nobody takes them out of the Father's hand. Nobody takes them out of my hand. And then He tells you what He's talking about. Me and my Father are one. But <coughs> don't it make sense? It doesn't that what the Word tell us? Oh Lord! Help us not to be a baby. Teach me how to talk. Lord, teach us how to walk. God in the Old Testament says, He alone is God and Savior. Alone. There is none beside Him. Get to know Him, church. Run to the New Testament and find Emmanuel like Brother Darrell has picked the choir song. God with us. He is our great God and our great Savior, the mighty God that came down from heaven, showed His face, showed the invisible God's face. Be aware of people that splits Him up. 
Be aware of this, uh, because if you read the Bible, what Jesus says, uh, when they, the people would tell Him, we worship the Father, and Jesus would tell them, you know not who you worship, because if you did, uh, you'd know who I am. Aren't you glad you know who He is? If you don't, here on Full of Grace Ministry, you'll find out right in the Word of God, because so many people does not want to read the Word of God and fully accept all the Scriptures in the Bible when it speaks of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, let them read the part where He's the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Uh, praise God. I'm so thankful one day He opened my eyes up. I was one of them. I was one of them people. I was one of them that seen three individuals I've seen a God, invisible, I, by my imagination. I don't know what He looked like. I knew the Catholic Church drew an um, old man sitting upon a throne with a long white beard. And then He had a, a younger son known God, the son that was sitting next to Him. That was a picture that they drew up just to uh, get it in your mind to make it look like it's two or three there. But our Bible don't say two or three. And all through the Scriptures and the Holy Word of God, the Lord our God is one. And when Jesus will speak of the Father, He told you plainly where the Father was. It was in Him. He, He the Father is in Him. So if you knock on the door and you enter in the G through Jesus Christ, which is the only way to the Heavenly Father inside of Him. When you say, Jesus, my Savior, inside of Him is the only true God that is alone and the only true God that is the Savior. And that's the Heavenly Father. That's why Jesus is our Savior. Because God God Almighty walks and talks in Him. Lord, I'm just a baby. I'm just a baby. Teach me how to walk and teach me how to talk. Oh Lord, I'm just a baby. Teach me how to walk and teach me how to talk. Praise God. Teach us, Lord. Holy Ghost, uh, oh Spirit of the living God, praise God. Walk among us in our midst uh, and teach us the ways uh, that we will hear You, the Great Shepherd, the Great I Am. Because You said, My sheep hear My voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Uh, you better follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, be His sheep. Uh, and I guarantee you, if you follow Him, him, you're going to be following the Lord God Almighty that is alone and He's the only Savior. Our Heavenly Father is the only Savior. Thank God Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I accept you and you only, Father. And I know you're in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and our great Savior. Praise God. So many people are leading people on, making you think there's a God here, there's a God there, and there's a God here. My friend, when Mary was overshadowed by the Spirit of the living God. These people that believe in this triune, i like to ask them, which person, which they claim there's three persons, which person got Mary pregnant? They believe in three persons, which that's not Bible. There's only one person. Jesus is the very express image of God's person. That's His person. That's His person. But if it was three person, which one would be considered Jesus? Jesus' Father. My Bible tells me the Holy Ghost overshadowed her. Her. And they, uh, these triune people will say the Holy Ghost is a third person. Well then, plainly, the third person would be the Father. So, how about the other Father? Uh, what part did He play in it since the third person done the work? Uh, where's the first person at when the third person was getting Mary pregnant? 
I'm telling you, church, it, there was God, Emmanuel, like the song was given. Emmanuel was born. He showed us the face of God. And for all you triune and Trinitarian people, that Mary did not have three babies. Uh, she did not have a God the Father and a God the Son and a God the Holy Ghost. She had one individual, Emmanuel, uh, God with us, uh, the great God. God, our Heavenly Father, known as our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> if He was a triune and that baby was ex supposed to show us the face of God, then He would have to have three faces in that cradle. But my friend, there was one name and one baby in that cradle. And His name was Jesus. It's the best experience to know God. I've been there. I was one of them. I was one of them triune. I was one of them. But praise God, I'm not just a baby no more. I've searched the Scriptures. I love my Heavenly Father. And I want to worship Him and serve Him only. The great God. The Heavenly Father. Him only. Only, and I love my father so much. I found him. I, I found him in my Jesus, uh, the great God and Savior that was born Emmanuel. And I, in Revelations, there is one that sits upon the throne. You can read it for yourself. I don't care how many people says there's two or three. You'll find in the book of Revelation one, one sits upon the throne, and His name is Jesus, the great I Am, the mighty God is sitting there, our great judge and everlasting Father. You will see Him in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. But why not get to know Him now? Why not get to know your Father now? So our Jesus won't have to look at you and say, you know not who you worship. If you did, you would know who I am. I'm so glad I know the great I am. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm not just saying it, church. I've read it for years and years. I was one of them. I was one of them triunes. And it got to the place I, I was afraid I was going to make somebody jealous because I had to pray to two or three people and lo and behold, because I knew my Father said He won't share His glory. My Father will not share His glory with another. And if you know another beside the Father, yeah, He's not going to share. He said He's jealous. He will have, have no other God before me. I am a jealous God. Praise God. I just wanted to add something. Say, God sent His Son. But what it is, God says those words, God sent His Son and gave His only begotten Son. But what it is, He was born in that male child, born of a woman. God came Himself in that vessel. He did. It's the Word said it was Himself. It, it, he was uh, concealing us yeah. with His own self, our great God and Savior. The God in the Old Testament says He alone is God and Savior. He alone, nobody else but great God, your heavenly Father, is the only Savior. And before me there was no God formed, and there will be none after me. None. So all you ones out there saying there's another, there is God the Son. Let me tell you something. There is Jesus. There is a name. There was a man called Jesus that was the great God Almighty, the everlasting Father that came to this earth. It was not another. And I know that I'm telling the truth or the Bible is a lie. It says, God formed and there will be none after me. I even, I am the Lord and there is no Savior. No, no Savior. 
So here comes a bunch of over here. Say, well, here's another Savior. Here's God the Son. He's a Savior too. No, God the Son is Emmanuel with us. It's the same great God Almighty that showed His face. Because we find out in the New Testament, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for Himself His own special people. I'm glad I am a Jesus name, one of His special people. When you find God, your Heavenly Father, let me tell you something. This ought to give you joy. This ought, ought to really give you joy that because you might have thought you love Jesus by words, saying, I love Him, I love Him. But, but did you know Him? And when you know this great God came to this planet, planet in the name of Jesus, you're going to really fall in love with Him and you're not going to put nobody else beside Him and you're going to call Him your everlasting Father. And His name is Jesus. The Bible says that. A lot of people don't want you to know that. Why? Because Jesus tells them, one of them, others, Jesus tells them, you know not who you worship. So when you get to know Jesus, then you know who you worship. Jesus said, if you did, you know who I am. This is our great God, was known as the Son of God, that was God Himself. And He told us that the Father was in Him. And they had the same hands. And He, he, went, he went, did you know the scribes and Pharisees wanted to stone Him? Not because the Son of God. Because he went into details. And he said, him and his, the Father is one. And they said, oh, you being a man maketh yourself God. That's why they wanted to kill him. So we got churches going on, still don't want to claim that he is the great God. And probably if Jesus was in the flesh today, they'd want to stone him. You're not the Father. You're not the great I Am. No, you're just a man and you're making yourself God. Church, let me tell you, God became a man. Emmanuel dwelt among us and walked among us. Our great God and Savior came to this earth. One individual God. There's no two or three. There's many uh, so-called so -called gods. But there's only one true God. And that's the Heavenly Father. And in the Old Testament, He was known as Jehovah. And you study that out, and that Jehovah means Jesus Savior. That's who Jehovah is. Jesus Savior. We don't have two saviors. We didn't have uh, two or three individual person overshadowed and Mary because I don't know that one looked right to me but there was a great God the Holy Ghost got over her and she brought forth a son and that Holy Ghost took on flesh and if you don't know who the Holy Ghost is that's God for God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth uh, the truth is Jesus uh, you got to worship the spirit in Jesus the spirit in truth uh, and so and we find out uh, there's only one spirit uh, and so we ain't, we don't have two or three spirits. Uh, there's a Father Spirit and a Holy Ghost Spirit. That Holy Ghost Spirit is the God Almighty Spirit that got over and shadowed Mary and flesh wrapped around known as the Son was the great God Emmanuel everlasting Father. If you learn that and search the Scripture, you will be shocked 
What churches have been telling you all these years? Why didn't you show me my father's face? I always heard son, 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 God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But my Bible tells me there is one God, one God, and He's in the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll love it. You'll be thanking God that He showed your face, and you'll be called one of His special people. The salt of the earth, a, a Jesus name, a powerful name, uh, where you lay hands on them and they shall recover. A son cannot do nothing. A son, he said out of his own mouth, uh, I can do nothing of myself, uh, but it's the Father. So when you know Him as Father, when you say Jesus, great Father God is almighty in that name, uh, when you know that He is the Father, when you say, Lord Jesus, the power of God, raise them up, uh, raise them up in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to say something parable. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. So, the Father's name is Jesus. The Son name, thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he, the Holy Ghost, he said, I will send in my name. So, there you go, Father Jesus. Son, Jesus. Holy Ghost, Jesus. Why do we proclaim the name of Jesus? Because God is in that name. Amen? So if you want to be loved and you want to find a church that really cares about you, find one that just don't put Jesus on the side. Put Him on the tail end of a prayer or even call Him God the Son and make you think in your mind there is another God somewhere. Let me tell you, church, think about it. Think about it. They try, they say they're showing you love, but Jesus, greater love than no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. And you read in that Bible, you find out who laid down his life. It says our great God uh, came down uh, and, and laid down His life uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, but they won't tell you that. They'll think, make you think there was another God called the God the Son laid His life down. And they also make you think that God the Father uh, did it for you. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, that God the Father killed His Son for you. Uh, that's not Bible. God loved you so much, He came down. He came down to earth. Emmanuel was born. God with us uh, was born on this planet. And He loved you enough. And you and didn't take His life from Him. He laid it down freely. Uh, the Lord Jesus said, No man takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. And He said, I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to raise up. Some people will think, Well, God the Father raised Him up. Jesus Himself said, He, He uh, had the power to raise Himself up. He said, I am the resurrection and life. Uh, he is the resurrection. Uh, and if you take that away from Him, you're trying to strip Him of His Godship. Uh, God Almighty is named Jesus. Uh, he is the one that raises the dead. He's the one called Lazarus from the dead. And He's the one that raised Himself up. He said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to raise it up. What power? God Almighty, the everlasting Father was in Him. Praise God. That's the power. That's the power. You know, I used to, I used to try to get it in my mind, I think. Here, I was reading it on the surface and people was telling me, God sent His Son to die for this sinless, I mean this sinful world that beat Him into a pulp, spit on Him and ripped His clothes off of Him and, and, uh, made Him carry a cross to over, over, you know, Golgotha. I used to think, oh my goodness, why would God do that for this world? Why would He send His Son? I couldn't send my own Son into the world and have Him die for people that's mean and cruel and backbiting and, and all kinds of ways. But when you realize the deeper parable of the story that God Himself took on human flesh and became a Son and 
died in our stead. That makes it, look, woe is me, I'm undone. Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips, Isaiah said. Woe is me, because I realized I seen the Lord high and lifted up and who he was. And his name is Jesus. Praise God. And that's something to be proud to know that. Now remember this, keep these words in your mind. Go to your Bible, look it up, read it for yourself. And I don't care what churches say. I don't care. I'm not talking about denomination. I'm talking about learning who your father is. Your father. Your father that loves you so much. And he loved you so much more than people's telling you. They might be telling you that he gave his son. Now, let me tell you, your father loved you so much that he came to this earth. In the Old Testament, remember this. Before me. There was no God formed, and there will be none after me. So there was another God uh, was formed. He said it plainly. You don't have to uh, uh, go to school to even know that. And he says, I, even I, am the Lord, and there is no Savior. God. We're talking about God now, our Heavenly Father. There is no Savior beside me. Does anybody accept Jesus as their Savior? Remember, he said, there's no Savior. He said, there's no Savior beside Him. So if you claim Jesus as your Savior, He's got to be your God. How can He save you? Only God saves you. You better claim Him as your God. And if you don't know what God I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Father, our Creator of this universe. He has to be that or He's not your Savior. You you might as well say, Goodbye, Jesus. Goodbye. You're not my Savior because God the Father said He was the only Savior and the only one it will be. But I'm so glad I know my Father is Jesus. It's forbidden to worship anybody but God. So if Jesus is not God, we cannot worship Him. It's forbidden. So I worship the Lord Jesus for I know who He is. I don't put Him beside anybody else. I know He's the one true God. And remember, look it up for yourself, Titus 2, uh, 13 Looking for the blessed hope in our glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Which in the Old Testament, there's only one Savior. And here His name is. Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from every lawless deed. So, here on Full of Grace Ministry, get to know your true Father. One God. Heavenly Father, Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, one name under heaven, and God, we call you by that one powerful name, Jesus. We love you or we would not tell you the truth, and Jesus is the truth. He's the truth and the way and the life. No man can go unto the Father but by Him. So don't bypass Him, because God is inside Him.